Hi, welcome to Building Leaders for Success. I'm your host, Frank Taylor. Whoever said that success has an age limit has not met today's guest. Starting at age 12 and now age 13, this young man is making a name for himself as a chef on the greatest culinary competition show in the world, the hit Fox television show, Master Chef Junior. Well, hello, Chef Zach, and uh, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. So um, we're obviously really excited. Um, this is our first video cast that we're doing for Building Leaders for Success. Yeah. And um, what better way to start off than with um, a local hometown hero who's, you know, really making a name for himself by going out there and pursuing his dreams um, and, you know, of advancing his career at such a young age. So, so thank you again. No, thank you. It's a really big pleasure to be here. Well, we're, we're definitely honored. So for those people that may not know exactly who you are, mm -hmm. um, if you wouldn't mind, just tell, tell everyone who you are, what, what, what's your name, how old you are, and why some of the television audience might know, might know you. Uh, well, my name is Zach Carr. I'm 13 years old. I love to cook and play tennis. And I was actually on season four of MasterChef Junior. And I was a, semi, uh, a semi-finalist. That's right. He was, you were in the top four of MasterChef Junior. That's awesome. I mean, yeah. um, I've been a huge fan of the show ever since it first came on with the, with the adults and everything. Um, and it's funny because I, 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 I tend to watch, I, maybe I'm just a fan of, of Gordon Ramsay. And so I'll, I'll watch <laughs> his shows and everything. Too. I'm a fan yeah. <laughs> and people ask me, they're like, they're like, Frank, you watch all these cooking shows. So are you learning to cook? And my answer is, well, no, <laughs> I'm learning what foods I want to try. Um, if they ever have a competition where it's, you know, a battle of the microwave stars, <laughs> I'm there. I'm king of the chicken nuggets. So how would you describe your MasterChef experience? Uh, my MasterChef experience was pretty life-changing. I mean, I was a shy little kid that just played tennis from Florida, and then it was my, one of my favorite TV shows, and then actually getting picked for the show was life-changing because, like I said, it's my favorite TV show, so it was really, really cool. That's awesome. So after you had gone through the audition process and everything, um, and you learned that you made it on the show, when did the reality that... I'm going to be on Masters of Junior. When did that set in and, and how, how did you feel? Well, I'll be very honest. Ah, as soon as I got picked, I literally just stood there. I, did, I didn't move an inch. I was completely in shock because it's my favorite TV show and I could not believe that I was going to be picked because I was watching all the previous seasons. So it was really, really cool. I was completely shocked. Now, how many, how many young people were at the auditions. And where did you go for your, for your audition? Yeah, so I actually flew over to uh, Phoenix for the open call and then there was about four to five to six hundred kids there. And yeah, it was pretty crazy. And at the time I'm like, how am I supposed to like stand out and actually get picked for this? So now that I think back about it, it's really, really awesome. And what do you think it was about your audition that did help you to stand out? Um, well, I think that the big thing was just showcasing my personality and just really trying to let them know about who I am as a person and mostly my cooking skills. So that's, I think, what really kind of stood out for me. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, and anyone that's watched the show and followed your journey throughout the show, I mean, brilliance, you Thank know, you. In, in what you create. I mean, I sit there and watch it and I'm like, you know, I'm 37 and uh, <laughs> you know, I, I couldn't do that. So. Um, I know as part of the show, they they uh, they want to know what is going to be the name of your future restaurant and what is going to be your signature dish. So remind us, what's, what's yeah. the name of Chef Zach's restaurant? I thought this one was pretty cool. I think I'm going to I'm going to name it Goat, which stands for greatest of all time. And the reason why that is because I really want it to to be a three Michelin star restaurant. I want it to be a very amazing culinary experience. And my my signature dish would definitely have to be my pan-seared steak with my parsnip puree, my red wine reduction, uh, vodka cream sauce with my seared asparagus and thinly sliced radishes and cucumbers. Man, that's a lot, but, wow. but it's delicious. It's really good. <laughs> it's really good. Now, but you're not actually serving a goat, are you? No, no, no. Goat's okay, not thing. Just, no. just checking, just no. checking. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know, Maybe. No, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh, well, you never know. I mean, it's a, delicate, a del delicacy someplace. Could be. It could be. Yeah. 
It could be trending in the future. All right. <laughs> yeah. You could be the first GoTrepreneur. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I don't know if that's a word, but you know, who knows? Know. Maybe, but maybe it sounds cool. Maybe so. we'll make Wikipedia with GoTrepreneur. Yeah, so that's good. there you go. Um, you know, as a viewer, all we see of the show is obviously what is shown yeah. Yeah. on TV. Mm -hmm. um, what is life like when you're done shooting for the day? Um, and, and then what did you like California? Uh, shooting was actually pretty stressful. I mean, because obviously I was on an amazing cooking show, but after I was done, it was a huge t sign of relief. But then at the same time, all I would all I would be thinking about was the next week. But usually after I was done, I'd probably just lie down inside the hotel room and just relax. So I was pretty tired. And California was really, really awesome. I mean, the atmosphere was amazing. Everyone was super nice, and the weather was really, really awesome. So I like California a lot. Now, I've never been to California, so yeah. I mean, is the weather comparable um, to Florida kind of sort of? Yeah, it's, it's very, very similar, but obviously California is a little bit more dry, and fl Florida is more moist, but it's still amazing, so. Awesome, that's great. Any specific memorable moments from the show that really stood out for you? Um, probably the most memorable moment was definitely when I got picked inside the top three, inside the first challenge of the competition, because that was still, I was still shocked that I even got picked for the show. And then being picked inside the first uh, challenge of the competition was absolutely amazing. So that was probably my most memorable mo moment. Definitely. And what was, the, what was that dish that got you into the top three for that first? Yeah, so basically it was a burger challenge. So what I ended up doing was a chuck and sirloin burger with sautéed onions and shiitake mushrooms. Um, it was also, l let me think this is a while back, <laughs> uh, some, ch some, yeah, it was a cheddar cheese and some onions and mayo. And then on the side, I also did some uh, panko crusted onion rings. Yeah. Okay, by the time we get done here, I'm going to be going for a really <laughs> me too, me too. meal. This is uh, making me hungry already. Um, so where did this passion for cooking come from? Uh, well, I'll be very honest. It's just pure love for cooking. I mean, I don't have a complicated reason or go into details. I really don't know how to explain it, but it's just my love for cooking. That's awesome. Yeah. And, it, and it's okay to say that because, you know, some people expect yeah. you know, some kind of profound story yeah. that says, it's well, just you know. Love for cooking. Uh, right, no. And, and, and that's, that's, that's great. So when it comes to coming up with a dish idea, yeah. where, where do you get your ideas from? Um, I'll be honest again. Whenever I'm thinking of a dish, I like to think about a lot of different things. Um, the textures, the colors, the protein, all that stuff. But then I also watch a lot of cooking shows. I read a lot of blog posts and magazines, so all that kind of stuff. Because the one thing that always amazed me was the, it, it, the mystery box challenge. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, again, from the viewer's perspective, what we see is that box yeah. comes up. And there it is. There it is. Yeah. And then you, they're like, okay, you've got 40 minutes <laughs> to come up with a stunning dish that's going to elevate you know, a piece of bread <laughs> and a, a Hershey kiss, you know? <laughs> and what you guys do, and uh, I, it's, it's, it's just unbelievable. Thank you. Um, so with your growing experience yeah. as, as a chef and as you continue to hone your skills, yeah. when you go out to eat to a restaurant, <laughs> do you find yourself being critical of the food? Uh, well, believe it or not, I'm actually not too critical about it because I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't want to nitpick every like little thing because then it would just spoil the whole dinner and stuff. But, uh, but obviously if something wasn't cooked right, then I would send it back. But all I care about is just how, how it's well cooked and if it tastes good. If those two things are good, I'm, I'm good to go. So. Okay. <laughs> but you're not secretly whispering to mom, dad, going, no, no, boy, no, if no. Chef Graham and Chef no. Christina and Chef no. Gordon were here, they would be saying that it's bland, it needs more salt, and no. you know, no. what, what are they thinking, no. you know? No, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> So, at the time when you entered yeah. MasterChef comp competition, um, having only cooked for really 18 months, yeah. what made you think that you were ready to take on that yeah. process of That's auditioning and being a part of that whole journey? Well, when I f saw the audition date times, that was really when I wanted to audition. So what I did was I kind of, like that was my goal. So I really wanted to train myself and get myself ready to a point where I could uh, whip up a dish anytime and you know my neighbor Dawn she helped me a lot with the seafood and then my mom also enrolled me into the online culinary school 
So like I said, that date was the time that I knew I was going to be ready yet and I had to be ready yet. So that was kind of when wow. I decided. So, so basically, you, you set the goal. Yeah. You gave yourself a time yeah. frame saying, in order for me and to I achieve to this it. goal, yeah. I have to do A, B, and C. Yeah. And then you made it happen. Yeah, absolutely. That was, I had my mind set on that for the, for the whole time. That is fantastic. I mean, to do that, you know, the biggest complaint I hear from a lot of my success students, mm -hmm. because um, I have different people that, that come to, to work with me, um, not because I'm some, mm -hmm. uh, you know, success is not defined by money. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, you, yeah. you, you kind of self-determine what, you, what your success is. For me, um, you know, I've had a lot of success. Um, I was an educator for many years. Um, I have three yeah. very successful awesome. businesses now. Um, and with, you know, one of them, the, the Building Leaders for Success, um, you know, we have success students. And one of the biggest complaints that the students have is they will, they don't know how to, how to get to the end goal. Yeah, yeah. And I keep reminding them that it, the formula is so, it's very basic. Yeah. And it's exactly what you've done. Set a goal, figure out what those steps are, yeah. actually perform the steps, mm -hmm. and then you meet the goal. Yeah. But of course, the, the very yeah. first thing you have to do is make the choice to do it. Yeah, I, I mean, it sounds pretty simple, but then once you actually start to do it, it's actually harder than it looks. So it was, it was a lot of hard work, but at the same time, it was fun because I was cooking, and I was really, really happy about that. And it helps that you were doing yeah. something that you're so passionate yeah. about. Yeah, absolutely. So we see Chef Gordon Ramsay's determination, I think that's a good word to use, <laughs> um, for, for you and the other contestants, yeah. uh, both on Junior and then on regular MasterChef, um, as well as Hell's Kitchen. And, mm -hmm. you know, he wants everyone to succeed. Yeah. Um, what's it like to, to work with him? And, um, and what's he like off, off camera? Uh, Chef Ramsay is an amazing guy. He has literally an amazing personality. He like lights up the room and he's an amazingly nice guy. I mean, he's super, super nice. Like on camera, he comes in to talk to you, make sure you're good, all that stuff. And off camera, he's actually a really, really funny guy. He's always cracking jokes and it's really, really fun to work with him. And that's a side that, you know, most people don't get to see. I, yeah. I, well, they've definitely gotten to see more of that yeah. side of his personality. Yeah since Master Chef Junior yeah, came on the play. Definitely. Um, most people know Chef as you know, hard nosed. Yeah. <laughs> um, very structured and very determined because they've, you know, watched Hell's Kitchen yeah. and um, you know some of his other shows. Mm -hmm. So um, he obviously saw your your natural leadership ability and encouraged you and that was evident in one of the team challenges yeah. where he asked you to step up. Yeah in a situation where you weren't necessarily the, the team, team leader. leader. Yeah. So can you elaborate on that? Uh, well, when Chef Ramsey came to talk to me, I mean, I knew what was going on because our team leader was having trouble communica uh, communicating with us. And I knew that I had, a, I had to step up if I wanted to win the challenge. Because if I didn't win, then I would obviously have a good chance of going home. So I knew that I had to really motivate my team, get my team back on track, and you know, I think a lot of that also comes from being on the, on the tennis court, you know, with my calmness and all that stuff. So I think that also helped me out, and I knew I had to get that done. And I ended up doing it, and we ended up winning the challenge, so I was really, really happy about that. And it's, you know, it's funny that you mentioned tennis and, and yeah. calmness, because that actually kind of leads into yeah. the, the next question I have for you, which is, you know, throughout these challenges yeah. and even the elimination tests, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, very stressful situations that like you said, is going to determine whether mm -hmm. you stay on the show or you yeah. go home. Yeah. Um, where did this this ability to be patient and calm and level-headedness, where does, where does that come from? Well, that definitely comes from my experience playing on the tennis court because when you're on the, the tennis court, you're on your own. I mean, there's no one there to calm you down when you're upset. There's no one there to pump you up when you need that extra push. So that would definitely come from my experience on the tennis court. And I also think that related to inside the MasterChef Junior Kitchen and that actually helped me out a lot because I remember one time inside an episode there was five minutes left and I had to m make a new meringue which is where you crack the egg, you separate it and then you whisk up uh, the egg white inside a blender and I had five minutes to do that and pipe it and blowtorch it. So that definitely helped me out and I honestly am surprised it helped me out but I'm glad it did. 
What age did you start playing tennis? Uh, I started playing tennis when I was four. Four, wow, okay. So obviously being a contestant on MasterChef has brought new visibility yeah. and a, a celebrity status. A <laughs> um, how, how has that changed your life? Uh, that's actually changed my life a lot. I mean, I'm super busy. I'm doing a bunch of interviews and it's a lot of hard work. I mean, every week at, at Monday, I do a live Periscope slash you now slash YouTube cooking show that's live. And it's a lot of fun, but at the same time, it's a lot of hard work. But I'm privileged and honored that I'm actually getting to, to do this stuff. That's great. Any crazed fans out there? I'll be honest, I'm not really sure how to answer that question, but my fan support has been really, really awesome. I mean, it's been an emotional experience, obviously, with the MasterChef journey, but then at the same time, they've always been there to support me through the ups and the downs, and I couldn't ask for better people. That's great. Yeah, having a, a strong fan base yeah. um, and supportive fan base is yeah. only going to help propel you know anything mm -hmm. that you do in yeah. the future. Yeah, I, I try to give back. I mean, I get a lot of DMs on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, so I try to respond to them as many as I can, do video greetings, and all of that stuff. So I'm really trying to make an effort just to kind of give back to my fans and, and let them know, yeah, I, I'm answering your stuff, and I'm really, really happy that you're supporting me. Which I'm going to chime in on that because yeah. I was, and I still am, one of those fans. <laughs> and, um, you know, you're not lying when you say you do reply because that's yeah. how we were able to set up this interview yeah. was I actually just on a spur of the moment, whatever, um, said, well, you know, I'm going to send Zach a, a, a direct message on Twitter and just <laughs> and see what happens. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. he's, a, he's a local guy. He lives here in Orlando. It would be great to interview him and feature him as one of our success stories. And I mean, I think literally, I must have I must have picked one of your down nights because I think within 10, 10 or fifteen minutes, you yeah. had a response back. Hey, thanks for writing. I really yeah. appreciate the support. And uh, no, I mean that was that was really cool because yeah. a lot of people once they've had that national exposure, yeah. um, you know, it tends to change them yeah. as far as you know. Yeah, I get that. You, you know what I'm yeah. you know what I'm saying. Um, so with so many like um, television and film stars that. Mm -hmm are fans of the show, um, as well as, you know, athletes and other professionals. Yeah. Have you had any, any anyone reach out to you just to say they're a fan? Well, this is really exciting. Um, one of the best tennis coaches of all times. I mean, he's trained like five number one uh, tennis players inside the world actually r reached out to me and said he, he'd give me a tennis lesson, which is really, really amazing and I'm honored because he's such a cool guy and I cannot wait to do that. That is awesome. Yeah. Are we, can we, can we, can you share his name? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's, sorry, his, his name is Nick Volterry. He's one of the top coaches. He has his own academy in uh, Bradenton, Florida, and he's really, really cool. Now, I'm not, uh, I, I'm not well versed in tennis, but yeah. I, I know that name. Yeah. So, um, for a non-tennis person to know that name, um, that's, that's, that's awesome. So, yeah. um, any idea yet when you're going to get that schedule um, that lesson? We're actually still arranging a date maybe in April or March. I'm not too sure right now, but we're still d deciding that. And uh, any particular um, aspect of your plan that you want him to try to help you with? Um, really everything. I mean, he has such a good opinion on the forehand, the backhand, serve, all that stuff. So I'm definitely going to ask him for a few tips here and there, <laughs> but it's going to be a lot of fun. If you and I were ever to play tennis, you would get so frustrated because whenever I play tennis, I spend most of my time chasing the ball because <laughs> I've knocked it out of the park. I just don't seem to manage the whole angle, the That's okay. the racket, That's right? Okay. So, uh, so if we ever get to that point where we play tennis, yeah. uh, I'm just warning you ahead of time. Um, I'm sure that, that there are lots of young adults who would like to get involved in the yeah. culinary world. Mm -hmm. You know, they've seen the show and they say, you know, I want to be able to, 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 to do that. Um, what, is, what is your advice to them on getting started? Well, my advice is actually pretty simple um, for anyone that wants to start cooking. And it's really just getting inside the kitchen because I find that a lot of people say, oh, it's too hard to cook and they don't even bother to get inside the kitchen. So what I would do is start with something simple like, like eggs, that's actually how I started off, by, by making scrambled eggs. And then eventually, or you, or you can just pick a really easy recipe. So like I said, just really get inside the kitchen, start with eggs, or pick an easy recipe just to try on. 
and if they get to that point where they feel yeah. like they're ready to audition, um, what is your best advice as far as preparing for a MasterChef Junior audition? Uh, well, preparing for the audition. Um, well, like I said, I, I flew over to the open call, so what I would do is just kind of practice asking questions and just like practice chopping, all that stuff, and just practicing and honing your skills. So when you get there, you have a great personality, you can show off your, your, your cooking skills and abilities, and that's really about it, just to kind of, just be yourself. Okay, great advice. In any aspect of life, yeah. right? You know, <laughs> yeah. Whether auditioning for MasterChef or not, no, you know, yeah, definitely. Just, just be yourself. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a million dollars worth of words right there. So, all right, so let's move away from MasterChef yeah. because uh, that's how everyone knows you. Um, and I know with all, all the interviews that you've done, um, I've, you know, I've seen you do the Good Day Orlando a couple of times. Yeah. Um, and I know you, you love the MasterChef journey, so um, I'm not discrediting that at all. But let's let's let our viewers have a chance to get to know Zach outside of yeah. MasterChef. So um, tell us about your family, brothers, yeah. sisters. I actually have an older brother and an older sister in brackets. I'm kind of the baby slash youngest of the family. And I sadly don't have any pets. And... That's just a hint to my mom. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was. I, I didn't want to mention the puppy. I mean, it, it did air on national ta uh, on television. Yeah, I, but, I mean, uh, a lot of people have seen that, so I thought that was a pretty good way just just to slip it in. I think that was a good convincing argument. Yeah. But we all know, as good sons, we don't want to make moms unhappy. So no, that's not true. My mom's pretty cool, too. Yeah. Okay. Well, who knows? Maybe one day you'll come home and there'll be a big old bulldog or something waiting for you. Hopefully. You know. <laughs> I'm, uh, I, mean, I mean, my dad and my brother wants one, just my mom and my sister. So. Now, having an older brother and older sister, yeah. are they good to you or do they do the typical older brother or older sister thing no, and pick no. on you? No, they're really, really nice to me. Um, my sister helps me out a lot. My brother helped me out with the website. So they're really, really awesome. Oh, that's cool. And it's yeah. great that there's you know, willing to help be involved yeah. in, you know, this, this yeah, journey. Yeah, like my so. whole family is involved in everything that I do, so that's, that's really cool. awesome. Yeah, I have, a, I have a younger sister. She's five years younger, and uh, I'm not going to say I used to pick on her, but <laughs> I definitely didn't let her get away with anything, so. Um, so, you're at home. It's dinner time. Are you the official chef at home? Um, it kind of depends. When my mom is cooking, she's kind of the chef. But when I'm cooking, then I'm in charge. But yeah, I'd, I'd probably say I'm the official chef. And sorry, mom, but I think I'm the better one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We'll edit that. Wink, wink, yeah. nudge, nudge. <laughs> um, so when you're running the kitchen at yeah. home, um, are, do you also serve as expediter? Uh-huh. Making, I don't making sure the dishes go out on time to the rest of the family. No, no, this no, dish isn't no. ready. Where's my, where's my size? Where's my garnish? No, my mom's pretty good, but I kind of like scound around the kitchen sometimes. <laughs> but I help her out, and she helps me out a lot too, so we're good. Okay, good. It's so between, like, so yeah. between the two of you, everything comes out, you yeah. know, cooked it's, to, to it's perfection. Good. No, 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 my mom's a really good cook. That's great. Well, and that, so did, was she the one that taught you to cook? Yeah, well, uh, she actually taught me a lot of the basics to cooking, and then um, I felt like I wanted to do something more, so I found an online culinary school, and then she enrolled me to that. So that was really, really awesome. That's actually how I know a lot of what I know. Okay. Now, we mentioned tennis earlier. Yeah. So, and you said age four? Yeah, I started, started? Yeah, okay. I started playing at four. So what was it about tennis that drew you in that made you say, hey, you know, um, I'm going I'm to be a tennis player? Well, it was actually kind of, uh, when, when I was a kid, my mom and my dad used to bring me to the ken to, to tennis court, and then we just keep on playing, starting to get lessons, so it was really kind of that. And I've just loved it ever since, so that's really, that's actually what I want to do in life, and then once I retire, then I want to become, then I want to go inside, like, the, the chef world. So after you, uh, I can't even think of a, 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 one of the top tennis players to, to compare you to, but after you beat them at Wimbledon, <laughs> And you say, okay, I've got my Wimbledon trophy. I'm going to retire now, um, and now I'm going to go be a three-star Michelin chef at yeah. Ghost, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so outside of tennis cooking, what are some of your other interests? Um, well, I actually love to play video games. Um, I try to get my parents to go bowling and mini golf and stuff, but then we occasionally go outdoors and, and play some soccer and basketball. What's your favorite video game? 
Um, I like to play a lot of the sports ones, so FIFA, Madden. I, pl I play Madden with my dad sometimes, but I beat him, so. And it's, it's funny, whenever, <laughs> whenever you play video games with, with parents, they, ever since Nintendo left with the, the one keypad, now all of a sudden you got two joysticks. Every time we play, my parents are asking, man, it'd be so much easier if there was a joystick. So. Yeah, joysticks, uh, yeah, I don't want to date myself too much, but That's yeah, like that was. That's like caveman years, man. I know. Well, there's a, there was a system that was out eons ago. You probably never heard of it. It's probably in a museum someplace called mm -hmm. ColecoVision. Nope, never heard of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You have to Google it. Um, like I said, it, it'll be in it, And it was just simply, it looked like a remote control that had a dial that you turned. And one of their most popular games was called Pong. It was a ping pong game. <laughs> so, but back in the dark ages, that was yeah, video that was cool games, thing. you know, for us. <laughs> um what activities are you involved in as far as school-related stuff? Well, I'm actually homeschooled, so okay. apart from tennis, cooking, and then my relaxing time, that's basically pretty much I do. I, I cook, I do my blog and my cooking show, and then I also play my tennis, do my schoolwork, and then I relax. And then occasionally, like I said, we go out and play mini golf and, and baseball, I'm sorry, uh, basketball and all that stuff. So, Favorite basketball player? Um... Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, good choice. Yeah. All right. Are you uh, an Orlando Magic fan? Um. It's okay. I, the viewers I, won't I be upset. <laughs> I don't really watch too much uh, basketball. I'll be honest. I don't okay. really watch too much. Okay. Who knows? Maybe we can, if they know that you're uh, that you are a basketball fan, maybe we can get you on <laughs> doing something with the Youth Foundation. <laughs> um, all right. So let's let's talk success and leadership. Yeah. And we kind of hinted at at it in, in the first mm -hmm. part of the interview. Um, how would you define success? Um, success is different for everyone in my opinion. In my case, it's being happy and achieving my goals and if something doesn't work out, resetting. Okay. And most people who, most, yeah. um, who are successful mm -hmm. find themselves in a position of leadership. Yeah. How how do you find define leadership? What is or what is what, what does it mean to be in a leadership role? I think a good leader is someone who wants to follow them. I mean, it's someone that has kind of like that quiet confidence and just that natural born kind of leadership. It's someone that has the confidence and really that believes in themselves that they can be a leader and just really knowing how to lead a group whether uh, they need help with something or that's definitely what I think makes a good leader. And do you think leadership and success work directly hand in hand? Or, I mean, should we expect someone who is successful yeah. to be a great leader? Let's um, put it that way. I think that that's a good question. I mean, there's several ways to kind of go about it. I mean, you, you could be a great leader and sometimes uh, things may not fall your way, or you could be a bad leader and, s and sometimes you get lucky. But I also think it's different, especially if you're like if you're your own boss, you you're a great leader, and then 99.9 .9 of the time, I think you will be si si successful if you have a good foundation, you're confident in your abilities, and you're your own boss. That's great. Now, with success, earlier we mentioned, um, you know, when you were coming yeah. about the the process for you know going, yeah, you know, preparing for the audition, and everything, that it was goal process action. do it yeah. and action would you say that that's your formula for for success or do you have um other things that you do in addition to that that's formula? also uh one of the things i do for my formulas of success but the main things is really just to believe in yourself have the confidence that uh, have the confidence in yourself and your abilities always to keep calm in high pr pressure situations and also just making sure that you set a goal, you really work towards it, and then you will achieve it if, if you believe in yourself and you get it done. Okay. Every successful person yeah. that I've, I've spoken to or worked with, um, and, and even myself in, in my various business ventures, we've all dealt with failure, failure. in some capacity. Um, you know, I, I, I personally, I, I like to read a lot of books on leadership and success. And, you know, if you think about the great leaders out there, the, uh, the John Ma Maxwells and Dale Carnegie and, you know, some of these people that really um, have made names for themselves as 
leaders um, yeah. through their success, they've all said that at some point they failed, mm -hmm. but they've been able to turn that failure into a success. Yeah. Have you had any instances where something just didn't work right and you had to recover from it? Uh, two words, and that's pig ears. But. <laughs> Somehow, um, <laughs> I wondered that was if that was going to be the answer. <laughs> yeah, um, but I'll be very honest. I've failed more times than I have succeeded on the tennis score and in, inside the kitchen and in just in general in life. And I think without failure comes success. And I would not be the person I am today if I hadn't failed so many times. Like I said, in the kitchen, in life, and on the tennis court. So I think that definitely has a big part in, in success. Yeah. Um, do you have someone in your life or, or people in your life that have pushed you? That would definitely have to be my parents because they've always pushed me to do amazing things and they've always been there to support me and give me that push when I most need it. So they're definitely my biggest uh, fans, my supporters, and definitely my, my mentors. And it's great that you're your family is so yeah. supportive of you. I mean, just today, just uh, having the opportunity to, to meet your mother, <laughs> and um, you know, obviously she's got your back one yeah. million percent, which a is a billion, <laughs> which is great. You know, and she's such a, a kind and respectful lady. It was a, it was an honor for me to be able to to meet with her, and you know, um, and to be able to go and and take you to the interviews yeah. and, and and continue <laughs> to be that mentor for you on the cooking stage at home and, and everything, Definitely. that's uh, that's great. I mean, awesome. I have a very, uh, it, my situation also very similar. I have two very supportive parents that yeah. uh, no matter what I've wanted to do, um, um, I was a very successful band director for yeah. 13 years. I taught from awesome. elementary school through college. And so when I said, um, oh, you know what? I think I'm gonna leave teaching and I'm gonna buy my mom a preschool because that's been her career is early childhood education. Yeah. After my dad got done saying, Frank, are you crazy? He was like, but if you, this is what you want to do, we'll support you. So that support system at home yeah. is definitely, you know, so important to the it's continued very growth. Important. Yeah. So now that the official MasterChef journey has come yeah. to an end, what's, what's next? I mean, we know um, that you've got the, the cooking shows and demonstrations that, that you're doing every week. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll, we'll put all of the links up for all awesome. of your social media contacts. Um, that'll be um, in the credits at the end of the show. Yeah. Um, but what's, what's next for you? Uh, even though my MasterChef journey has ended, the real adventure, I mean, it's just starting. I mean, I'm working really, really hard every week, like I said, to prepare for my c cooking shows. Um, I also have my blog going. I'm in the process of writing my own cookbook. And uh, I'm also going to be culinary consultant for the Stephen Cates camp. I'm going to be doing an event called the, uh, with ho hosted by Robert Irvine for the Florida hospitals. And I'm really, really excited. And it's been an honor just to like do all this stuff because just two years ago, I was literally a kid just playing tennis. And <laughs> it's just amazing just to actually be able to do all this. Um, so just to, uh, to wrap things up, what words of wisdom, on any subject for that matter, whether it's cooking, leadership, success, would you like to share with our viewers, both young and old? Uh, I think the most important thing is to take risks because if you don't take a risk, you'll never know what would have happened. Um, always just to be yourself, have belief in yourself, have the confidence to do whatever you want to do in life. In my case, it's cooking and tennis. So that would that's really just my kind of points there. As you can see, it doesn't matter how young or old you are, success comes from the desire to follow your dreams. If you have a goal, what are you waiting for? Go after it. Make the choice to make it happen. You are never too old to achieve your dreams. On behalf of the team here at Building Leaders for Success, we want to thank Chef Zach for spending time with us. We would also like to thank the awesome team of students and teachers here at Seminole State College especially Program Director Chris O'Brien and Operations Manager Marcus Armstrong. For more information on our success seminars, blogs, and leadership events, visit us at www.buildingleadersforsuccess.com, on Facebook at facebook.com slash buildingleadersforsuccess, and on Twitter at leading for success. That's the number four, leading for success. And remember, 
Motivation, innovation, and inspiration are the keys to building leaders for success. Thank you very much.